Welcome back to the Welcome Figmentation back. Podcast. Yeah. Uh, Figmentation is a nonprofit. We work with <coughs> kids that have experienced some kind of trauma, and uh, we make them the hero. We help them find their inner hero by making them the star of their own movie. Um, it's a pretty simple concept, but so, so much So complex deeper. to try to, just to try to explain. Yeah. Right. It is. It's, it's it is. a really interesting... We knew what it was to begin with. We understood what figmentation was um, even before we had a word for it. But well, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's an interesting concept. When you try and explain it to somebody, they get it, but it takes 30 minutes to explain, which is why we're doing podcasts. So we can say, go learn on our podcast. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah, don't right. Go listen it. to us talk go over there. Go listen to us talk about sometimes it. Sometimes we do it so much better. <laughs> it's it, Sometimes there's days where, where you just trip over your feet trying to talk about it, right. you know, and then there's other days where you're so crystal clear and concise and the person you're talking to just understands. Yeah. And it's a different <clears throat> way. It, explaining it is different no matter who you're talking to, depending on who that person is and what their background is. I find myself explaining it to academics in a completely different way than I explain it to artists. Right. It's true. It's true. You, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you explain it to somebody who's artistic or somebody who's mm-hmm. worked with children, they they get it. But when you explain it to somebody who's who's a little more academic, they you have to explain it on the level that that um, they can understand it right. from the business point of view or the business perspective. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, I kind of call it speaking their language. Right. Um, and I, I equate this. I, I just had my class reunion and I had a friend of mine that I asked to define the word nerd for me. And she had a completely definition for the, or completely different, different definition than mine. And and I learned in that moment that everybody has a different definition for every word they've ever heard because we don't really retain the dictionary. We retain the context of the way we learned the word. And so explaining to somebody what this means for a child, you have to be able to explain to the person in their language. Well, and everybody has a different perspective. Everybody sees something differently. It's amazing how when we talk about you, you have that lesson you've taught me about color. Your mm-hmm. red is different from my red. It's your red is different from her red, my red. It's so it's it's yeah. interesting how our brains work and how they see things and and our own perspectives from and a lot of perspectives are influenced by personal um, 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 experience experiences that yeah. you've had. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So the, the scientific term for that is qualia. Qualia being that there's no way for me to articulate exactly what's going on in my head. If I tell you the color, I see the color red, there's still no way to know for certain that the color red you see is the same color red that I see. Um, and what happens is, is art becomes a way for humanity to express themselves in another language. Right. And so figmentation is a way for these kids to express themselves in a way that kids really wrap their heads around, which is imagination. Exactly. Yeah, it's true. I mean, and when you sit down with kids, part of what trauma does to a kid is mm. um, it forces them into a situation where that part of them gets closed off. And so that's what figmentation is all about. It's about opening that door and giving them back that imagination where pretend play and, and uh, um, um, discovery, basically, adventure comes from. So it is, right. it's, it's really cool. But it is interesting when we try to explain to people what the concept um, behind what we're doing and why we're doing it. It's, it's interesting to see each person, each individual, and how they take it in or how it affects them. So many people, you can see the wheels in their brain just turn back and they just start spinning and they're, they're thinking, some are thinking, wow, when I was a kid, you know, or, or how I thought, or some are thinking of somebody they know, or some are thinking that even themselves would have benefited, you know, um, right. in childhood. So it's interesting to watch people when they do grasp it. And it's funny how each individual grasps it differently. So it's really mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, we often get the, the you can see the, the cogs in their head, the, the watch cogs in their head mm-hmm. spinning, where you can see them thinking, how, this is amazing. How could I use this concept? And, and a lot of the times it's, but why do you only work with kids? <laughs> yeah, we've got that but, a lot but, too. But, but I'm 25 and I, I need, need this. this. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, I'm 40. I need this. Right. 
And it is it is cool to sit and talk to somebody. We just spoke with somebody the other day, and watching his perspective on it was completely different. He mm-hmm. was he kept asking us questions about how it because he was in his brain he was seeing it from a different angle, and he was asking us questions to fill the gaps. He was he was yeah. an artist turned um, businessman, yeah. and and he kind of missed the art and the way that he could express himself and communicate those inner workings of his mind out loud and and he missed that he wanted to get back to that a little bit yeah yeah so that yeah. was that was fun i mean and everybody that that when you get it when you grasp the concept behind um what we're doing it's it's everybody it it affects them mm-hmm. they all go oh this is cool so right. Right. well and we we get to be in the middle of that you know because we we get to do it yeah. And so, yeah, we well, know how cool it is. We've we've experienced it ourselves because we've yeah. done it for ourselves for years. Right. But w- watching other people get to experience the first like aha moment is almost like um, if you've ever raised children and, and you see them through their toddler phases where everything is magic, everything is magical. The way the grass grows is amazing to them. Yeah. And the way that water comes out of a and sprinkler the way the clouds head is amazing. Float and across the sky. Everything has wonder. Yeah. And when people grasp what figmentation is and they start to want to participate, that wonder for them comes back. Mm-hmm. And it's really cool because when you're, when you're the parent of a toddler, the toddler, you'll you kind of revert back to your childhood as you see them go through their wonder moments. And it's one of the best parts about being a parent because it reminds you how incredible the world we live in is if you just stop for a moment and look Mm -hmm. the way a child looks. Mm -hmm. And so these adults will come into this situation and and really love the idea. And then they get into it and they're just like, oh my gosh. And their childhood wonder comes Comes back. back. And it's the coolest thing to it see is. their faces. It is. They're just like. <clears throat> it is because it's. It, and that, again, there are a lot of adults walking around in the world that that once they've stepped out of childhood, they don't get to venture back. And that's mm-hmm. this is as much for the people involved as it is for the children that we do it for. The kid is the total focus and why we're doing it. Mm-hmm. But it influences everybody around it. The experience yeah. for the adults in the room is as much childhood wonderment exactly. as it is for the child. And that's I, I, I cannot stress enough how much fun figmentations yeah. are. Well, I also kind of uh, liken it to the idea that if you have a special needs child and when that special needs child overcomes something that they've been struggling with and they do it, the feeling that you get as a parent in their accomplishment is that childhood wonderment. Triumphant. It's triumphant. (laughs) It's just a wow, you know, and and I think that's what you were just describing in when you talked about having toddlers, when you watch them overcome something and accomplish, Mm -hmm. it's when our one-year-olds take their first steps and they accomplish something. Thing. We're just like, hey, you know, it's uh-huh. just so cool. And you that's, get to experience yeah. that same triumph that your yeah. child is experiencing. And it's, it's such an anchoring point for the human existence. And so in these groups with our volunteers, where each of them gets this, this minor anchor point in their existence, they're never going to forget. We like to call them core memories, right? Right. Where they're, they're always going to remember this experience and that day that they saw the way Alex reacted on camera or... Right. I talk with my hands a lot. Sorry if I keep bumping the microphone. (laughs) Um, I do. I'm very animated. I keep putting them in my lap. Don't talk. Um, Mm -hmm. But no, it's it's watching these people really get to re-experience childhood almost. It is. When we get to play and we have to revert back to childhood. Because as adults, we like to overcomplicate the story. What is Einstein's quote about... um, about being a child, about, we spend our entire childhoods growing up, <laughs> and we spend our entire adulthoods trying to find our childhood, it's, it's, our child again. It was Picasso. Oh, and it, it was, was Picasso. Okay. It was. Thank you. Let me see if I can remember it exactly. It was. Um, we spend our entire childhood trying to grow into adults, and we spend the second half of adulthood trying to learn to be a child again. Yeah. And it's absolutely true because what happens is life is full of challenges. It doesn't matter how old you are. You will be facing a challenge after a challenge. This too shall pass. Yes. The good and, and the bad. And you'll progress and you'll grow and you'll learn and you'll move right. on or past or above but or beyond. As adults, if we aren't aren't if we aren't given the tools in childhood to learn how to overcome our challenges, 
then it will feel like we're always within the challenge. And, and we miss out on so many possibilities. Yeah. You know, and, and being part of, of a figmentation is you start to really grasp the world around you. You start to see it through the eyes of a child while you're experiencing it. What would the child want here? Well, the child, the child wants to work with the stunt coordinator. Right. <laughs> he wants to put on his costume. He wants and to he be wants the superhero somebody, and save yeah, the day. He absolutely he does. should get to. Right. And, and the experience itself is, is wonderful. And the kids are, um, for Alex, it, and not just Alex, because we had Alex's siblings on set. Because we like to involve the family as much as we can. Right. Uh, mom and dad were on set. Mom got a line. Dad got a line. Right. Um, and and baby sister, who really just rocked being the girl behind the camera, right? And then we had Alex's best friend on set. Um, we've even had body doubles and extras in the classroom. And, and so he gets – our kids get as much involvement from their community as we can muster because we want them to – we want the people around them to see them as they see themselves, well, and it also, the, when I talk about the community and, and how many people are involved, um, because we're now involved in film um, and media with what we're doing, it's interesting to watch how even our film and production crews, you know, this is fun. These sets are fun. You know, you, this is, they get to be a part of that child's pretend play. And, and, and you can see why film the medium of film is so why filmmakers love making films because it's through that it's through that lens it's through that imagination well it's artistic expression again yeah, it's, it's exactly. the same thing we were talking about earlier it's it's all about language and being able to express yourself it's why every developed um, society leans heavily on art at at some point or another you find out that your language falls woefully short of what's within the mind right. and the capacity of the mind. And so we go looking for other mediums in which to express ourselves. Me movies are just another way to express yourself. So by giving them the opportunity to express themselves through the movie, what happens is they're telling their story, but it's not so much about the story as as the meaning behind it, the fable meaning, right? Which is, I can do hard things. Which I is, can overcome. I can keep fighting. I am the solution to all of my problems. I will keep trying. Yeah. And that expression, helping these kids make that expression as part of their daily mantra, I can do hard things. I can do this. Means that they will go through life with the ability to stand up for themselves, to be um, strong when it seems impossible, when most of us as adults struggle to find our strength, they'll be able to find that buried deep within themselves because it's part of their core memory. They've already had an experience in doing right. that. They've already proven to themselves they can overcome. They can. Yeah. Well, and self-confidence, real self-confidence, self is built on um, keeping promises to yourself. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I'm always teaching my kids that you can't have, so, have self-confidence because somebody else gave it to you. You have to keep promises to yourself so that you know you can count on you. If you told yourself, I'm going to get out of bed at seven o'clock in the morning and then you don't. And that's a consistent consistency. You're going to have a hard time getting out of bed in the morning mm -hmm. and you're going to have a hard time believing that you're capable of doing hard things. But keeping these promises to yourself is how you build self-confidence. And we want these kids to, we're letting them make the promise that I'm the superhero, I will save the day. Mm -hmm. And then we're even letting them discover that there's that possibility of, of because if it, there was no possibility of failure, then there would be no, no chance of. Again, I don't believe in failure. Yeah, it's not really winning. So <laughs> what we want them to believe is that they did overcome. Yeah. And they did become the superhero. And that gave them, that gives them their core of, of, at least we believe. It gives them their core of, I believe in myself. I can do this. It's how they build principle and character. Right. And uh, courage. And courage. It is. It's really neat. I love it. Yep. I love it. I mean, and, and that's um, with with being a part of it, and that's why we, we invite you to come be a part of it. If you want to volunteer or come be a part of a kid's figmentation, 
um, or just come and hang out and watch the process, um, you know, go online to figmentation.org and fill out um, an application for a volunteer and and uh, come join us because come feel the figmentation exp- come come have a figmentation experience because it really is life altering. It, it really, really is. is core memory for everyone involved. Everyone, and that's that's what makes this so different. Is it really is? It is all about the child making their core memories, but every one of us gets to make a core memory with every child. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty great. It is. Yeah. Anything so, else? I think we're good. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining us again. Subscribe. Um, please subscribe and hit the bell, and we'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye. Bye.